Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves UGB here on FlossTube, but also over on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Briefing. This is briefing number 70, or episode number 70, and I forgot to look at the date. It's in April, sometime in April. But the most important thing is it's the Easter holidays. <laughs> and I am happier than a bird with a french fry. Um, oh my goodness me. It seems that I just come on here every week to whinge about how tired I am, but we literally limped to the the finishing line of Friday. By the time we finished on Friday, in that week, bearing in mind there's only six of us in our science department, um, three were off with COVID <laughs> and one was uh, is off on, he's finishing the rest of his wife's maternity leave, so he's on um, paternity leave effectively, which we've, we've known for ages, that's fine. Um, but yeah, it still means that we're kind of four permanent members of staff down by the end of the week. So I didn't know who, if I was coming or going, who I was setting work for. Um, I was opening my classroom door and it was a bit like, you know, stars in their eyes. Surprise, surprise, which class is going to walk to next? I didn't know whether I was coming or going. But we got there. We got there in the end. And uh, everyone breathed a huge sigh of relief. We had a lovely day on Friday. They were raising money for the Ukraine um, fundraising, one of the particular charities that's doing work for fundraising, and they raised over £1,800, which is really great. Um, so yeah, we had a lovely, lovely day doing things for a really worthwhile cause. Right, I have got some stitching, some things to tell you about. Um, oh, let's start with this. So, I so appreciate that I have a lot of people who I can pick their brains because it really helps, it really helps. So if you take a little look, I wouldn't say 22, but I don't look as decrepit as I did last week. I don't look as decrepit. I haven't got really big dry patches anymore. And the redness, which I'm a little bit prone to since having my daughter, seems to have gone. And I had so many great suggestions for various different creams to try. Um, and I just picked one that had been mentioned a few times. Um, and I also didn't want anything that was too expensive. I'm sure the expensive ones that were that were mentioned are really, really great. Um, but just in case they didn't go for, work with my skin, I thought I'd try something along the more affordable end of the market. So the one I went for was um, CeraVe. And this whole pot was about £11. This is just the ordinary moisturising cream. I think you can get ones which are specific for the face but I just went for the bog standard moisturising cream, dry to very dry. And I have literally been slathering this on probably three times a day. So in the morning, when I come home from school, I was taking my makeup off, putting a good load on then. And then in the evening as well, before I went to bed, I was putting a good load on. Um, so it's got three essential ceramides and hyaluronic acid. I have no idea. I know hyaluronic acid is really good for sort of taking that um, dry skin um, off but what the other stuff do I don't know but thank you very much to everybody who suggested because this is a little miracle cream I have no dry patches on my skin at all now um, and every day it's just looking a little bit brighter and a little bit better than it did before which is perfect the other thing I just wanted to mention I had somebody ask me and I'm lost track of your message so I'm sorry um, about this stitch so this is called garden of dreams by barbara anna and she'd asked me what colors i'd used in the hair and um i didn't reply but when i just got it down now it's the called for colors it is the called for colors i couldn't remember what the reason i didn't reply at the time was i couldn't remember whether i just used one color and just kind of played with the variegation or whether i had actually done different colours and I have done different colours but I'm pretty sure it was what was called for because um, that doesn't look like something I'd be capable of doing on my own. <laughs> so yeah if that was you thank you very much for the question and that's what I did. Okay let's have a look and see what I have been stitching. I have worked on three things and started one new thing which is also part of my purchases part of my haul as well so I'm going to start off with let's start off with the least progress so I have been stitching the 12 days of Christmas by the Vivsters 
Um, you can get the chart in a PDF format on Etsy or I use it on the Silk app. Um, so if you've not heard of the Silk app, the Silk app works a little bit like Pattern Keeper in the fact that you can um, open charts on it and you can mark off your progress. Now, um, as far as I'm aware, the only charts that you can open on it are charts that you've bought through the Silk app. So it's not like Pattern Keeper where you can load your own charts in that you've got as PDFs. These are ones that you buy specifically through this app. But most of the time the charts are available from the designers, um, from their own websites, or you can, if you want to use this feature of the Silk app, you use it through, um, you use it through that app. So Jacob from Modern Folk Embroidery is on there, the Vivsters is on there, um, oh, do, 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 do. Jan Hicks is on there, lots and lots. Um, so this is what I've done so far. So I've just started on the third one. Now technically I should have finished the third one and be on to the fourth one by now, but I'm a little bit behind with this one. Um, so partridge in a pear tree, two turtle doves, three French hens. So this is going to be a French hen. And I'm doing it one over two on some 36 count that I hand dyed myself. So I've just got a little bit of a start on the cockerel's head there. Talking of cockerels, one of our students was in reception um, at break time actually, looking for first aid because she'd been attacked by a cockerel that morning, but it was still really painful for her, bless her. So I thought that was an odd, <laughs> we can chalk that up to one of the odd first aids that we have. Right, so there's that one. The thing that I've done most on this week is my A Year in the Woods. Um, I'm really conscious of the fact that the ferret will be coming out very soon and I've still not quite finished the swans, I still haven't finished the rabbit and I wasn't that far on the raccoon. Um, I will still keep starting them. Sorry, I've got a really annoying hair that's going across my face and I can't work out where it's coming from. Um, I will start the ferret because I want to start them all but I just wanted to be a little bit further on. So there is the hair. So I've put in his back. I've put in all of the pattern work on his flank there. So that's a lot of filling just left to go, really quite simple filling. So I don't think he will take that much to do. It's got a fair bit of stitching, but it's not complicated stitching. What's that? And then there's a few more flowers to go there. And I've started the raccoon. I haven't done any more on the raccoon. I think I've come to the conclusion that I will end up taking that out. Every time I look at it, I think, oh, no, I can notice it. So as big as this is gonna be, I think I'll, it'll have to come out. So there, there it is. Love, love, love. And the other thing that I've worked on this week, and let me just find the chart. And I've worked on this one. The reason I picked this one up is because it's been sat in my kind of school bag. The one that I take backwards and forwards, it's got all my marking and stuff in it. It's been sat in my school bag. And just this week, I just felt so frazzled that I thought I just need half an hour at lunchtime just to actually chill out and to um to put a few stitches in um i thought i'm gonna i'm gonna eat me they're gonna go mad i'm gonna hit someone <laughs> i wouldn't hit anyone but i might go mad so this is caroline scott 1821 by the northumberland sampler house which i've loved this i love this as soon as she started stitching it as soon as anita started stitching it I was sort of harassing her, you know, is this finished? Is this finished? Looking good. Are you re releasing it yet? Because I loved it. Um, and this is where I am on this one. I did have a bit more done, but I'd made a mistake up here. And I had to take a little bit out. Um, so I've got my trees in. I've got my top fence in there's a bottom fence to go in um and the border the border 
is a lovely border, but it's not a regular border. So that's going to require a little bit of counting effort to get that done. But I do love it. And I'm stitching that in the Cool 4 DMCs on a piece of 32 count that I hand dyed. It's a fairly plain dye. It's not, um, there's not a lot of mottling in it. In fact, I'd be surprised if you can see any mottling really. I did it in quite a big container. Um, so it's probably fairly even. And I can't wait to have this one finished because then I can add it to my sampler wall. So if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that today I put up my sampler wall. Now the funny thing was, I had not intended to put up my sampler wall. In fact, I had not really intended for that to go there. But I um, wanted to paint the hallway um, upstairs and it's quite a narrow hallway. So we, um, Mum had started painting it for me, which was lovely of her. And um, I changed the light fittings, or just the light shades really, more on that in a minute. Um, and I was going to put, I wanted to put my antique samplers out in the hallway uh, because there's that little shelving unit and I wanted to sit my big Phoebe Griffiths on it because Phoebe Griffiths is over there, I've shown you her before, the Welsh sampler, she's massive and I don't necessarily trust the frame outright um, when it comes to just hanging by itself. So what I wanted to do was put her on the wall but sort of sit her on top of the... Um, that little bookcase, but she's too big. She's too big. Um, it looked horrendous coming down the stairs there, or coming up the stairs. It was just too overwhelming. So what I decided to do um, was, because a lot of my antique samplers are still in very old frames, and I haven't taken them out and re reframed them, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring them into here, and then I'm gonna put some more of these little white shelves, these little sort of very thin shelves up so that I can rest my samplers on those as well as fix them to the wall. So if the frame's a little bit chonky, then um, they can still stay in there for now. Um, I'm thinking particularly of Mary Monkhouse, um, which has that beautiful antique frame, which I wanna keep, but I don't necessarily trust it to hang on its <laughs> on the wall in its own right. <laughs> So anyway, I decided to put my own samplers that I've done. And the ones that are there are the ones without glass. Now, this is an interesting aspect of my OCD uh, personality. And I don't really have much of an OCD personality. I am not freaky tidy. I am not um, particular about many, many things. However, I cannot mix samplers which have glass and samplers which don't have glass. <laughs> So there's my personality defect there. I can't mix samplers that have glass and samplers that don't. So I've still got a couple of other samplers. I've got one up there that's got glass in and there's one down there that I stitched that's got glass in. Um, and they will stay in here with the antique ones. And the ones up there are gonna be the ones without glass. So I just started putting them up on the wall. And I just quite liked having them slightly random um, again, that was a bit of a, a step from me because before I'd have been out there with a level making sure the tops of them were all level. But because they're in different frames, it just wouldn't really suit it. So I've gone a little bit more free fall for with those. So again, that, that took a little bit of a leap of personality there to do that. Um, which, if you know the rest of my personality, you'll be thinking... You're chaotic. Why are you talking about putting frames straight on walls? You're just generally chaotic in the rest of your life. And that is true. That is true. Chaos and confusion, my work here is generally done. So anyway, I put those up. I put those up and I'm really, really happy with them. And I bought these two beautiful new glass globe lampshades. And so um, I was changing the light shades and I electrocuted myself. <laughs> proper, proper electrocuted myself so there's the one lampshade out here and the um you know you've got the sort of two parts you've got the bit that goes into the bulb and you can unscrew that and then you can put a shade on and then you screw it back on and put the bulb in well 
it had become cross-threaded. So the, when I thought I was unscrewing that bit, I was actually unscrewing the top bit. And so I got this massive bolt off of it and it went straight through my fingers like that and my fingers like that for a while. I sort of managed to unfold them a little bit and I've got a little bit of a red mark on my finger and my thumb where I've managed to, um, yeah, get a really <laughs> nasty electric shock from it. Um, so yeah, as a science teacher, that was a really dumb idea, wasn't it? I should have just gone straight to the views box and turned it off. But normally you can just undo the bowl, unscrew the thing, take the thing off you don't have to turn the electrics off it's just because it was cross-threaded and so it wasn't unscrewing the thing that I thought it was unscrewing so anyway when I tell the kids about that the uh, when I go back to school they'll just think I'm an empty um, so one of the other things that I tell them that I did when I was at university uh, again doing a science degree I decided I'd try and use tin foil as an oven glove I know I know now in my defense there was this massive ball of tin foil that somebody had left on the side. And I obviously knew that the heat was gonna conduct through the tin foil, but there was no tea towel. And so I thought, it's big enough, the tin foil is gonna be big enough for me to literally just grab this thing out of the, out of the oven and chuck it up on the side, because it was a huge big ball of tin foil. No, it wasn't. So I did burn my fingers a little bit, but not a massive amount. So I always tell that story to the students when we're talking about conduction, because you can't beat the heat conduction through a massive ball of tinfoil, even if it is really massive. <laughs> there we go. So I have got, I just pulled out some other samplers. I've got another four samplers to go up on that wall before the, I show you the last bit that I've stitched on. So I have got, I just took these out of my box. The St Ives sampler by Little Robin Designs who has done a magnificent cow sampler that I need, 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 need. Um, so I might have to get that one. So that's the St Ives sampler by Little Robin Designs. So I need to frame that one. This one is called Quaker Alphabet by Threadwork Primitives. And I need to frame that one and put that up on the wall as well. And then I have, and two all a Good Night by Blackbird Designs, which I was very kindly lent by a stitcher in America. And that chart is back in America. You're just waiting for it to actually hit their doorstop. Um, but it is back in America now, so. And the other one I've got is this one, which is called the Hedgehog Sampler by Sheepish Designs. Apologies for the, I just took these out of the box. It's just a, if I try and pull it tight, there we go. And I've always been a bit concerned about the colours in this. They're, the colours are as charted, but they're just very pastel. And I think once it's on a wall with other samplers, I think that will be, that will be okay. So I've got four more there. And I've also got, and I just remembered, I've got Florence Bay Piggin stitched as well um, but she's in one of my other bags with another chart or another sampler on the same piece of fabric so that's why she's not here so I've got another four or five to go there um, and the good thing about the corridor or the hallway is there's more space so I've got plenty of room I've got plenty of room Right, let me show you the last thing that I have stitched and I need to just reach over here excuse me more so my pre-release from or my pre-order should I say from the primitive hair came in this week and this is called sorry I've just got all the threads shoved inside of it this is called cross stitch collector and it came as a kit with the fabric the chart the buttons and the backboard so everything bar the threads um, and the threads that are called for are a mixture of Weeks Dye Works, Classic Colour Works, DMC, uh, Krynik. I'm not sure I'm up for the Krynik. I'm going to have to think about that one very carefully. Um, and Gentle Arts. And I decided to just plough my own 
furrow as far as the colours on this one go. And so that is what I have done. So here is the bit of stitch thus far. And I changed the colour of her hair to make her grey. And that's where I've got to so far. So the lettering should have been Peacoat. And I changed mine to Cottage Garden Threads, which I really like. I really like Cottage Garden Threads. Ampersand. And it's a lovely grey to very dark grey, so a pale grey to very dark grey. And I love the way they present their threads. So when these come, they are twisted up really nicely. I don't even know if I can show you. And twisted up again, much better than I can do, like that. And these ends are tucked up into there. So in order to use them, all you have to do is pull them down and then when you want to grab one of the individual threads, you just pull it. You don't need to unpick everything from the top there. So that is literally ready to go really, really quickly. And if you want to, you can always put another hole in the bottom there for any part threads um, that, you, that you want. So I really want to get some more cottage garden threads. Christina from Wild Cyrus Snaps gave me this one and a few others, and I had a few others. Um, in stash as well but I really want to get some more they are lovely and the backboard where is the backboard here it is so it came in a lovely long parcel that's the backboard that it's going to go on and I know where I'm going to put it I'm going to put it above the door so I don't know how well I can sort of fettle that obviously it needs mounting on another board and I'm really happy with that really happy with that right freebies let's have a look at some freebies I found these lovely freebies from Brooks books and they are a collection of little houses spring, summer, autumn and winter and they are freebies and I've just printed out the cover of each one. Um, so that is the spring house. This is the summer house. That is the autumn house. And that one is the winter house and those are available to download from her website so will I I will of course put the download instructions down below it doesn't tell me because I've only printed out the cover page it doesn't tell me how big they each are so I'll put that information along the bottom as well so you could obviously stitch them all in a row if you wanted to or sort of like in little panels but all on the same fabric or you could stitch them individually They've all kind of got, mm, they've got slightly different sky colours, but I'm sure you could find a grey blue that matched them all if you wanted to. So beautiful. I will put the information down for those down below. Haul. I've shown you my haul already, which is obviously a pre-order, so I, I spent that money a long time ago. Um, I haven't got that much else really. I have ordered a lot of threads from Lakeside Needlecraft uh, because they had everything that I wanted in so they just happened to have all of them and what those threads are for they're for two things one um, cottage garden samplings let me get the right I always get that wrong cottage garden samplings who are doing the year in the woods on their website now they have put the entire thread list all the way through right to the very end so what I was finding is the first couple that came out it became really hard to get those particular threads I think Grecian gold is still yet to be found in the UK um, I was lucky I had a skein of it and Chris from the Nimble Thimble also had one skein of it that she sent me um, so yeah I think Grecian gold still hasn't 
been restocked. So if you are stitching them and you're planning on doing them all and you, you, or you know which ones you think you want to do, go onto the Cottage Garden Threads, uh, Cottage Garden Sampling's website and have a look at the thread lists and then you can get in early before everybody wants that particular colour thread. Um, so I've had those, I had those sent to my mum's actually, because we're going to my mum's next week, um, in the week, and then Ness and I are going on up to Newcastle to see her grandparents. Um, and I had them sent to mum's because Lakeside tend to take just a little bit longer to post out than Peakside and um, Patchwork Rabbit. Not much, but they have, I know, been waiting on certain things and, and been cutting fabric and things like that and they actually arrived super super quickly so they are already at mum's I think I ordered them on Thursday Wednesday or Thursday and they are they got delivered today so that was really quick so I'll show you those another time um, I also ordered the threads or the specialty threads for that nearly hit the floor um, this one so I've told you lots of times that I'm in Teresa Kogut's Patreon um, and I love 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 it and this is one of the charts that she released this month and it's called Cherry Jubilee. In fact I loved all of the charts this month um, and so I've picked this one and I've ordered the the specialty threads for this one. So it's mostly DMC apart from uh, Weeks Dye Works, Kudzu, Whiskey and Crimson. So that is a love, love, love must stitch. I love that. And she also did another one, um, which was like a, a flower bowl um, on black fabric. And that looked really, really nice as well. But I, I decided to go for this one to stitch. And the other thing I bought, just a random thing, the princely sum of 50p, because I thought it would make a really nice pin cushion. So this is, I believe, what they call either an invalid cup or a sippy cup. So it's uh, just a spouted cup, so uh, the drinker doesn't have to have too much control and can just have it into their mouth. So that's why it's either a sippy cup or an invalid cup, I believe. Um, but I just thought it would be really fun <laughs> to get a nice piece of fabric and some padding and just turn it into a little pin cushion. Like I said, it was the princely sum of 50p at like a house clearance um, shop where I've got a few. In fact, I got, yeah, that little crystal frow frog from there as well. They have some great stuff in there and it's not expensive. So yeah, that was my random purchase there. Oh well, that's just the way I roll. Right, I will see you next week. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do for Easter Sunday. I may pre-record or I may pre-record a special because, as I said, we're going to be up in uh, Newcastle with the, with the grandparents. So I don't know quite what it's going to be. I haven't decided. I've got two or three ideas in my head, but I hope you'll join me for whatever it is. And I'll see you next week. Stay classy, Stitchers. <laughs>